What is up fellow earthlings? Thank you so much for joining in on my channel. Let it go junk removal. My name is Austin Lee Hires for those of you that don't know. And if you're just joining in on this channel, please hit that subscribe and like button down below guys. I really do appreciate it and it helps out the channel a whole lot. This video today is going to be basically a interview between me and a show that was on live Facebook the other day called Shit Happens. You deal with your shit and I'll deal with mine. Without further ado guys, here goes the show that we went live on Facebook with the other day. If you missed it, you're really going to enjoy it. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions. And once again, I love you guys. Thank you so much. family there yeah. okay go ahead oh, i'm so glad that they, they're with you austin so um yeah. of course everybody knows who i am it's it's margie and you know cecily and um we, you are listening to shit happens where we transport you to the best story in town where we celebrate the doers the screw youers and the cage rattlers and we have one of all three of those with us and his family right austin introduce us What's up, guys? Yeah, it's awesome. Who's the family? I, I, I love, they're so adorable. This here is Magnus, my youngest. We've got Osiris. And we've got Ember over here. This is my beautiful wife, Kelsey, behind me. Hey, Kelsey. Hey, Kelsey. So it's a huge family affair, right? Yeah, it's a, it's a family business, and, and we run it together. Wow. That's and great. That's you great. You are known as the king of junk, correct? The king of junk, yes. I have a, a crown that's made uh, out of a uh, cone, a road cone. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I well, love it. Listen, Cecily, you know what? I've got some junk in my trunk that I want to let go of. <laughs> Ooh, you have junk in your trunk I have junk in my real trunk yes <laughs> I'm so glad that we have this story coming on because we're talking They're about get out of here let, for now. bye family nice bye. to see you so let it go junk removal this go, is your business this is your business and it didn't start out as a business it just started out as something totally different and then the family got involved. So take us back for just a moment. All right, all right. So yeah, it's, it definitely uh, started out as something that I was just doing on the side. And I was picking up leftovers from estate sales and garage sales. And I was doing it for free. And uh, I, was, I was even picking up uh, huge like houses. I was borrowing trailers that like I was taking more than I can hold really. I filled up mm -hmm. uh, three different sheds with junk just to resell it and make that money. Oh um, and until that, that day where I was at someone's house and they just asked me how much, how much was it to remove this stuff? And, uh, and, and I was taken away by that. I realized I could turn it into something that was a uh, full-time business and, uh, and, and basically allowed me to stay at home more with my family and build it with yeah. my family. Yeah. Were you even surprised that junk could be a treasure trove of sorts well that's what they say somebody's junk is somebody else's treasure treasure that's right yeah. that's right guys yeah so definitely um i actually have some videos playing behind me of the uh youtube videos that i shoot and it shows uh the treasures that we find in these junk removals on a daily basis and we, uh, we save them, we resell them still to this day, but we get paid to remove them. So yeah. that's the huge difference is that we can literally make profit from removing them and then make another, I don't know, what is that, like 200% profit when you sell something on top of making money? Yeah, um, yeah, that's the... So, so uh, I have a question for you on that note, though, Austin. So you're paid to remove this junk. Have you ever been in a moment where you see something that 
wow is pretty darn valuable, but you don't say anything and then you take it. <laughs> I mean, right. how do you handle that? Because I yeah. would say, oh my gosh, what? I've been there too many times. And in that situation, you have to just stay calm and remember you don't put a price on anyone's junk, especially yeah. if they're seeing in their eyes as junk, don't put a price on it and, and, uh, and kind of give them a second thought about getting rid of it. If they're already getting rid of it, there's no harm in just taking it and doing your job. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. So have you ever found something that you liked and you're like, Ooh, I'm keeping this one. Yeah, for sure. There's tons of things, tons of things. Um, my house is 80% junk removal. <laughs> uh, we'll have to do a walkthrough of the house one day. Uh, but it's, it's definitely um, amazing. I, I don't even, what's the best thing that I found? I've literally, I've got a car for free. I, I sold the car for like $1,500. Um, I've wow. got two cars for free actually in this business. So one was a Toyota and one was a uh, Chevy S10, a uh, little truck. I had replaced a fuel pump and it started right up. <laughs> and good, in good working condition? Good working condition. And um, the Toyota was amazing. It was, uh, and, and the way I got it was like the guy was willing to sell it to me, but he couldn't find the title. It took several months and I had to get the title myself. He ended up just giving it to me. He's like, you had to go through all that trouble to get the title. He's like, you can have the car. And wow. it was it was literally a diamond in the rough. It was like a wow. 1999 with um, something like 60,000 miles on it. Not yeah. much at all. Yeah. Oh, 1999. That was a good year if you ask Prince. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And those Toyotas, they ran forever. I ended up yeah. selling that car after using it and making some money with it. I sold it to a um a house cleaning business here in town and they still use it to, you know, go clean houses. Mm-hmm. And so well, I, made, I made money with it. Listen, yeah. Austin, I've known you a very, very long time. Right. And um you've always been a real doer and a go-getter. But take us back to when this all started. What made you get into this business? And what were you doing with your life before then? All right. Yeah. (laughs) So uh, really, what made me, I I was kind of in this business, like I was saying, reselling things. I've been doing that all my life. My Mm -hmm. mom's owned a state sale business. Um, she's always garage selling and I was always, always around like thrifty used, you know, people getting rid of their stuff type of, um, you know, it just, I was always around that. Yeah. So, yeah. So being that I was always around that. And then I, I had a kid with my wife, uh, basically long story short, I really had to get a job. I really had to buckle down <laughs> and I had to provide for these kids. I had to provide for this family. And, uh, and I did that by getting a job as a pizza boy and, uh, delivering pizzas, you know, making a couple dollars on each delivery. Sometimes they give me 63 cents for a tip and, uh, it was ridiculous. (laughs) I I wanted more. I wanted more. Wouldn't anybody want more? Right. Absolutely. Uh, And so, but I was, I was, had that drive because I had a kid. I know I want more and I want to be able to, to be free one day of like working under the man. Uh, Mm -hmm. and so I saw myself doing that I worked myself up to being a chef there at the same place it was a gourmet restaurant slash pizza place and Mm -hmm. I worked myself up to being a chef at the gourmet restaurant Um, after that working 75 hours a day busting my butt I was making about $200 a day at this point Um, and that didn't cut it that didn't cut it yeah, that wasn't enough for me. That was yeah. because the hours I was working compared to the money I was making, I, I, div- I divided yeah. it out that way. Yeah, yeah. So you were probably making like five cents an hour. Right. Yeah. It, yeah, it's like, oh, yeah, you can make this much. But if you're working 24 hours a day and you're right. only making two, 250, 300 yeah. bucks, then yeah, it's not yeah. really worth it. I want to make like a minimum of $50 an hour um, on a regular basis. So, Were you getting pressure from Kelsey to say, hey, enough already. You've got to do something else. And then when you said, you know what, I'm going to go in the junk business. Did she give you the side eye? <laughs> yeah, she she gave me the side eye. Definitely. She but she was a silent side eye. And that was it. <laughs> <laughs> It wasn't. That's it wasn't, worse uh, than the real thing, right? Because yeah. you don't know. Okay, what is she thinking? Oh, look at that. Right. 
I built that garden back there. That was when it was nice and green and fresh. Oh, oh wow. I might too, be too bright. Is it too bright when you're spring? No. Yeah. So anyway, yes, she gave me that side eye and, uh, and she, <laughs> she didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know what I was doing, but I was like, hey, I see money um, and, and I went after it. So basically I quit my job as a chef um, to get back to that part of the story. And I went into the junk removal industry um, and, and I just, I really just got started. And now I'm not only in junk removal, but dumpster rental. So, and it's really cool because junk removal, you're offering a service to people that don't want to do it every day. People that aren't there, um, do it yourselfers, right? Mm -hmm. These are the people that they want to hire people. Um, mm -hmm. and then you have the people that are do it yourselfers. And they're the people that want to rent a dumpster because they want to fill it themselves. They want to do the construction themselves. And so yeah. now, we, now we can offer both sides of that to where somebody wants to do it themselves, whether they want to or whether they want us to do it for them, we can offer them right. both sides. And you do consulting as well, right? Yes. On my YouTube channel here, um, I do consulting. So um, basically, if you have any questions about junk removal or dumpster rental, I answer any questions that you have within an hour. You can sign up on my website. There's literally a link underneath every one of these videos. There's a link and people really can just click on that. And uh, I give them an email letting them know what time of day I'll be calling them on the day that they signed up. And we go ahead and get it done there. So you know what's I equally I impressive? You know what's equally impressive? The number of followers that you've created through your social media. This has been amazing. I mean, you just like blew up with your business, but then now who knew that junk would be so popular on social? Right, right. Talk yeah. to us about that. And how did you create that following? I just started, um, I've actually deleted or not deleted, but made them private all of my first videos because they're so horrible. <laughs> and, uh, and and so right now, most of the good videos are, are what you can see on there. But I just, I did it within a year. Um, actually, I don't think That's... it's been a full year yet. It's about 11 months right now from when I actually put my first video on YouTube to today. Uh, and each video overnight is getting, you know, 400, 500 views in one night. And, you know, within a week, it hits maybe. Wow. And how many followers do you have? Uh, right now I've got 1,655 followers oh, to be exact. That's amazing. Yeah. Wow. You, I mean, you do have an amazing, um, social media and I, I did some math here. So you just turned 30 at 21, you met your wife at 22. You had your first child. You worked in the pizza business and worked your way up to chef in six years. So what you have been doing now has only been for three years. You have gone from one truck to, I don't know how many trucks, to having employees, to being a consultant, to having a social media, and you plan to retire in the next few years. So my question is, what's been your motivation? What has just made you get up every day and just drill it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? <laughs> It's the babies. That's what yes, it is. It's that's, the babies. That's, that's the biggest thing. The kids. The mouse. I want to. I want to. I want them to have the life I never. I never got to have. I want them to be taken care of, but I want them to know what what the work ethic is. Um, yeah, and they have yeah. like allowances. They go. They do chores, and they and they learn work ethic, and and uh, that's my reason for my drive. But uh, I just have this natural drive on top of that. And yeah, um, yeah. there's a book, I don't know if you guys ever read it. It's an older book called Rhinoceros Success. Mm -hmm. It's I've a never fantastic, heard of it. funny, okay. goofy, short book on Amazon Audible. You can get it. It's amazing. But yeah, that's my kind of drive is like, I'm like a rhino. I just don't stop. I go forward. I can't back up. And, and that's it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, C Cecily, I want to tell you something. When, when Austin, from when he was a little boy, he used to ask me, business questions because I was in retail as an executive so he would say you know how do you make money um what do you do for advertising so it's, oh 
This was at a young age? This was from a young age. He's always been interested in, in, in stocks. I mean, I remember he was still a teenager and he was saying to me, you know, tell me about stocks and bonds and stuff like that. So, um, so it's no wonder he's so successful right now and no wonder that he's going to retire in just a few years and make us both feel like losers. So yeah. thank you very much, Austin. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> oh, you guys are fantastic and, and you did great. The other, the other thing, Austin, I want to, to ask you about is um, your give back because you support breast cancer, you support the environment, uh, and it's just not you, it's your employees and it's your kids. Can you tell us some, a little bit about that? Yeah, so um, first of all, I'll start with how the kids, you know, they really help out. Um, once a month, they clean two different lakes. Uh, and they go out on the same day and clean these lakes up, picking up with the tongs, all the trash and cigarettes and beer that people leave out there. Um, and, and they really just love helping to clean up. And then the people see that out there, that these kids are cleaning up their mess and they- That they're, they're in the junk business. Yeah, yeah. They're and in the junk business. <laughs> they, they are, they're learning the junk business. But they're also, yeah. you know, they're learning to give back and they're learning to mm -hmm. keep the earth clean because, uh, you know, if we don't do that, that's, that's, uh, we're going to, we're all going to die. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> so that's no, just, it's, true. it's it's funny because it's so true. It's so true. If we yeah. don't jump on top of um, cleaning this earth up and, and, and figure out how we can work together to do that. It's um, going to be too late. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Definitely. Right. So um, on top of them, on top of my kids really helping to clean up those lakes, we also donate to breast cancer awareness uh, to the trees and to the oceans. That's why we have pink, green, and blue dumpsters. Oh. So each color of our dumpster, uh, it, it represents something that we donate to when that dumpster gets rented out. That's fantastic. I love that. That's, That's I love that concept. That's wonderful. That is wonderful. Thank you. So, so with, go, go ahead. ahead. No, you go ahead. So you've got these the the business that you started from scratch, and you're oftentimes seeing mostly men doing that. But I'm wondering, do you have women working with you hauling the junk away? Uh, yeah, I've had I've had women come out and work for me, and. Uh, it's, it's been good. Like they always push as hard as they can, but then, mm -hmm. you know, they, they it, it's, it's, it's been, I don't know, four women that I've hired so far and they kind of just give me that no call, no show, or just give me that text. Like, Hey, I can't, I'm really sore today and I can't do this anymore. I'm like, listen, it's okay. Like, I really appreciate you uh, doing your best. And so, and, but there are women out there that will stick through and like, tell, like my wife, for example, um, and there's several women on YouTube doing it, just just showing that, you know, women are more than capable of picking up some junk. And Absolutely. It's all, it's about, all about leverage anyway. It's nothing, nothing hard. It, it's really, a, it's a simple thing to do, um, but the actual getting the customers can be the most difficult part of the business. Mm -hmm. I guess so what's the right job for the right person. Yes, right. Yeah. correct. That's it. Right, exactly. You, you know, if you're happy doing it, you're happy doing it. There's nothing more to it. Well, I have one more question before I go, because I have right. to go and I, and you're not leaving. I'm leaving. Okay. As you can see, I'm in my car, but I just want to know what's next after this. Are we going to have like um, um, franchises? Or where, where are we yeah. going with Let It Go? Uh, I want it to be the largest privatized junk removal company in, in Central Florida. That's what I want. Uh, as far as for this business. And after that, I wanted to run steady uh, and I want to be able to start another business on top of that. Oh. I actually have a really great idea. Um, I don't really want to talk about it though, because uh, oh, I was so just about to say, that. that's a tease. You cannot do that. Really? Uh, maybe when I get it started, you guys will do another episode. And I was just going to say, we are going to be the first, first podcast that you advertise that on okay. let me tell you that okay yeah it's, it's gonna be amazing i really i have already talked to it's, it has to do with realty and realtors and, and selling houses and stuff like that but oh. i have a really great idea and a lot of realtors love it so 
we'll we'll see when we uh okay. when we try it, right? Be the first. Everybody's Nat- natural it. born entrepreneur. I love it. I love it. Austin, it's always a pleasure and I'm so excited about what you have going on. And now I yes, know too. who to call when I need to get my junk out of my trunk. So thank you for coming. But I've got to go and I hopefully will see you very, very soon. <laughs> Bye. See you. Yes. See you. Bye. Thank Bye. you. It was, it was good talking to you. You too, as always. Bye for now. Have a good Bye. one. So Austin, I'm, I was reading through your bio the other day and in your bio, you said, my wife and I are making moves every day to scale and grow our small empire. So you don't use the word small business. Empire is your goal. Yes. That's a very big word. And it's yes. not a it's not a humble word. Empire is not a humble word. <laughs> but you're an extremely humble person. So how do you stay grounded? Ah, uh, you have to focus. It, it's all about the family. It's all about you know involve everybody that you 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 love if they want to be involved. Um, like my brothers are helping out wherever they can. Uh, anybody that, that can help out is really here to help me. And I want to, I want to build a, the most, um, friendly, uh, happy, um, go getting empire there ever was, you know? And, and I just, I don't see it like these empires today. I, you know, I, I want to see it like my business is now as a small business, everybody, everybody on is on the same level and everybody works together everybody understands each other everybody uh talks out what 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 needs to be talked out so that's my vision you know and that might be too much of a perfect vision but like i really i really want a peaceful uh empire Mm -hmm. that that people really just get along and and understand that this is this is something that comes from a collective working, not just from one person or one yeah. side of the company. You know, I read something very interesting last night and I immediately thought of you. Um, you obviously know who Elon Musk is. Yes, yes. Okay, so he actually um, put a um, request out there to all big corporate CEOs. And his, his, actually, it wasn't a request. It was almost like a, you guys need to do things differently type of thing. And he was saying that he would like to see less corporate meetings, less corporate um, Zooms, I guess you want to call it that as well, and have these CEOs on the floor doing what everybody else that they employ do. And right. I've always had that sort of in, in my work ethics. I've always believed in, in, if I'm going to ask somebody to do something, I, wanna, I want to do it. I want to know how to do it. And I want to do it with my employees. That I feel so, that you're the same person as that. Uh, yeah, that, that speaks so many volumes. Yeah, because that's, that's so important to understand what you're asking of people. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that, and that comes down to everything in life, you know, even the president of the United States, uh, would you, you know, do this? Would you get down? Could you do this? Um, but yes, that, that's, that's so important. I, I, I love Elon Musk. I, I really, yeah. I look up to him. I think he's amazing. And I invest into his company. Um, speaking of, we spoke of stocks earlier and, and uh, you know, I don't Good know. Move. <laughs> right. You know, it, it, it's amazing. So um, that is such an important thing in my business. I want to keep it that way. That's why that's the way I want to keep it where I was saying I want everybody to be on the same page, everybody to be level because, um, you know, the bottom jobs, the, the labor jobs can be really, really difficult, especially when you're at the top, just pushing. All you're doing is pushing the button and saying work faster. Yeah. And um, yeah, you're, you're killing people for, for pennies or peanuts um, when you could be down there showing them how to do it, you know, in maybe a more efficient way. Yeah, absolutely. Like, so what would be your one um, piece of advice to, to anybody that is out there that is an entrepreneur or anybody that has a small business that wants to become an empire? What would your one word of advice or your sentence be? Okay. Yeah. It would be hard to put it in one word. Yeah. Um, 
but I would say build a strong relationship with all of the people that help you build your company. You have an idea, they're investing in your vision. Um, and that's the biggest thing you can do to grow. You need people to grow. You can't be a big company without people. So right. that's literally the most important thing is, is having a very good relationship with the people that you're bringing on and making sure that they're fully invested just like you are into the business. If they're not, then obviously you're not going to have that relationship. Mm -hmm. um so i found two guys they're like fully they're fully invested they they love working and, here they and i bet you if i had to say to them what is the best thing about your job they'd probably say my boss you know and, and i would love to hear that i would love to hear that and they and they definitely um compliment me all the time they buy me breakfast um yeah. i've never had employees do that that's yeah. so amazing so that proves right there just how much uh, we, we all love each other. We truly do. Yeah. And uh, respect each other. And respect each other. Yeah. So that's the biggest thing. The biggest tip I can give anybody out there starting their business, just make sure you get a, a respectable um, a family of employees. Yep. Yeah. Sure. Good advice. Good advice. Well, Austin, it's been great having you on the show. You know, um, this is not going to be the last time. Uh, you you definitely owe us to come on and tell us or our viewers uh, what your next venture is. I will, I will. Um, but what can we do for you? Is there anything that we can do for you? Yes. Uh, right. Subscribe. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Anybody watching, that's, that's okay. all I ask. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Go on my Facebook uh, page and like that. Um, and, and just continue, uh, you know, supporting us as a business, call us anytime you need dumpsters or junk removals. And, uh, yeah, that's about all I, all I could ask. Well, we'll definitely do that. We'll post, um, all of your websites and social media, um, in our newsletter and, um, ongoing. So, uh, thanks for being with us today. And, I, uh, you're going to take us out today, not me. So take right. us out. All right, fellow earthlings. Just make sure you handle your shit and I'll handle mine. We'll see you next time. Thank you guys. See you tomorrow. On Shit Happens. <laughs> Bye, Moggy. Bye.